Snackers. Matt DiNapoli here. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco Developer Relations. Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a lead technical advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. Uh, welcome to episode 114 of Snack Minute. Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute bite of learning covering tech, coding, and some cool projects that we work on here. Now, the topic today um, is probably, I would say, near and dear to our hearts uh, because we always talk to you guys about APIs. We always talk to you guys about automation. Um, and we've mentioned CI CD pipelines. Um, and so we talk about the foundational things, but I don't think we've ever really fully put it all together. Um, and today we have Adrian Alessio with us. Um, Adrian, would you mind introducing yourself and give us a little rundown on what you'll be talking uh, with us about today? Thanks, Matt and Kareem, for having me again on the Stack Minute. I'm super excited to be here. So my name is Adrian Alessio. I'm a developer advocate with Cisco Developer Relations, where I cover mostly enterprise networking technologies, such as Cisco DNA Center, Cisco Catalyst SD-WAN, Cisco IOS XC, and Cisco Meraki. So um, yeah, for today, uh, I've came with the CICD pipeline demo. Um, we have some links for you at the end, but yeah, happy to discuss you and, uh, and get the conversation going. So tell us a little bit, and for those who don't know, actually, what is CI/CD, and like we talk about about it a lot, but why? What is it, and why is it important for us? Yeah, so I mean, CI/CD stands for Continuous Integration, Continuous Deployment, or Continuous Delivery, uh, depending on how many components you have for your pipelines. And these pipelines have been used by software developers for you know many many years now to automate the way they deploy code, they write code, they they build the applications, they deploy them into production environments, they test them. So it's it's basically a set of technologies, a set of tools that you put together to automate your work, right? So it comes very handy for infrastructure automation also because you can easily define the status of your networking. Um, you also, of course, have version control with, with the pipelines. That's kind of where it all starts with the version control we're using in my demo here, GitLab. But it's basically defining the, the status of the network of your infrastructure that you want to be at, and then you know doing a git commit, git push, that goes to a, a central location in your git environment, and that triggers a pipeline. So the cool thing about this, um, and, and you kind of bringing this to everyone's attention right now, is that I would argue that this is the heart of what we call infrastructure as code. Um, it could be, uh, you know, YAML files, JSON files um, that are managing our configurations. But, uh, you know, the key point in all of this, uh, and you mentioned it, Adrian, which is the ability to, um, you know, take snapshots to make sure things are uh, set up appropriately, do run run unit tests if necessary, um, and then ultimately deploy uh, those changes out to our network. And so we have visibility across all of those steps to make sure that um, everything is in line and that we're not pushing something that's malicious or, or harmful. Um, and it ties into the, your organizational policies really nicely. And so as a concept, the thing that Adrian shown today, I think really hits at the heart of what we mean when we say infrastructure as code. So let me quickly show, this is my test environment because we do need a test environment that we're gonna work against, right? So I have a fairly simple topology here with a couple of CSR 1000 Vs at the top. And then we have here at the bottom, the distribution switch one and two. This is just Nexus 9000V virtual switches. You see they're running all in CML. Big fan of CML here. Uh, I'm loving the tool. So this is just our test network, right? This is what we're gonna use for configuring our OSPF. So OSPF, by the way, is running on all these devices, right? It's advertising routes, it's everything perfectly fine working. They're, they're seeing all the loopbacks, all the interfaces. Uh, so what are we gonna do in our demo is just add a couple of new routes using the pipeline, right? So if I go to this switch, I'm quickly gonna just uh, do a, it's actually already here, a show IP interface brief. So let's see, I have uh, several VLANs uh, configured. I have a loopback zero interface and a couple of, you know, physical slash virtual interfaces here. Same thing on my switch two, right? Same VLANs, a loopback, and then a couple of uh, internet interfaces on that virtual switch also. So this is how it looks before I do any configuration change. 
here I have my GitLab, which is um, my version control and also GitLab commit edition that I have installed here in a CentOS sandbox has the pipeline component built in, right? So the nice thing with GitLab is that you have here pipelines and here you can see previous runs of the pipeline, right? And you can have these pipelines triggered automatically whenever uh, there's a new change detected in your repo or you can have them scheduled at specific times, right? I want it to run every evening at 8 p.m., for example, right? So you can have them scheduled. Uh, for me, I have them whenever there's a change detected. So basically, whenever I do a git push, the pipeline gets triggered automatically. So this is the repo that has all the components. Um, I have my PyTest configuration here and the test uh, environment, the job, the PyTest jobs, they're all defined in here. I have my group bars and host bars. This is, of course, for Ansible. Uh, creating environment. If you start um creating your own pipeline you can basically follow this repo i have all this content on github.com slash ei devnet slash cicd dash twitch there'll be a link in also in the video for you to follow along if you want to to use exactly what i've done here and creating environment basically has all the components to get you uh started there's the docker image there's a docker file in there there's how to install from scratch GitLab, right? In the Docker environment, the GitLab runner, everything is in its create environment to get your um, pipeline set up. And then configure SPF. This is just an Ansible playbook for configuring or SPF. So for the pipeline, we have here gitlab.ci.yaml, and this is a specific file that GitLab is looking for, right? So when you define your pipeline, this is the exact name with the dot gitlab .yaml. This is exactly how it has to look. And here are the components of this pipeline. So how you define it in this YAML file, right? So there's a couple of environment variables that we're uh, importing here. Uh, this is the Docker hub image that I'm using. You can use, and this is basically um, a Docker image that has all the pre-required components. It has uh, PyTS pre-installed, it has Ansible pre-installed, right? Uh, all the components are, are already in here. And you can also have a look at the Docker file that I have uh, in that create underscore env. Uh, there's a Docker file in there if you want to modify with uh, that image and create your own. Perfect. So there's the Docker image that I'm using. So the Docker image, basically what happens is whenever the pipeline gets triggered, there's a git clone that gets done. Um, and it's being done in that image, right? In the Docker image that's being spun up. Um, and next, the three stages are being run, right? So I have three stages. And then it's just defining your pre snapshot stage with PyTS. This is the stage name. And what does it do, right? On the script, it's like, okay, what do you want this, uh, this stage to do? So I'm just changing directory into the PyTS folder. And then I'm running this job and I'm specifying the test bed file, which is pointing to my CML environment, right? Credentials, it's an XOS, these are the IPs and all of that. And then the trigger data file, this is important, is what it should PyTS look for, right? When it does that snapshot. So it's like your show IP route to SPF, show IP SPF neighbors, right? So all those commands that it's actually gonna run on the devices and extract all that operational data and organize it nicely in JSON format for you. And then HTML logs is just where it's gonna save the logs for the pipeline. Uh, all right, so then artifacts, this is just the output for the stage where it should save them, right? So you see here the pre-snapshots are these JSON files that are being sa saved in this location and will always save the artifacts in that location. Then the next stage will be deploying our SPF. So this is just the script for this is an Ansible playbook from that configure SPF.yaml file, which is, you know, configuring SPF. That's uh, the Ansible playbook for, uh, for that. And then post snapshot, right, the script that it should run as part of the post snapshot, which is, you know, the PyTS change directory into that folder, 
can run that job with the same test bed file, but in this case, the trigger data file would be the post trigger data file YAML. And this is what you want PyTS to check for. And basically you would want it to check that those two new interfaces, those two new, those two new routes have been successfully configured. Now, Adrian, the, if I'm looking at these steps, I'm assuming that they are, they, they don't run in parallel. They're basically top down. One has to yes. finish before the next one gets executed. Is there a, an option for me to say, I want you to run this in parallel or it, this is by, by definition or by default, it, the design of the oh. CI CD pipeline? So in this script part, you, it, it's usually one at a time, right? So one after the other, but at each of these stages, I'm only running one playbook. You could run a couple of playbooks, right? So you could run another playbook at this stage, right? Sure. You understand? So you're running this, the configure SPF, but at the same time, at the same stage, you run something else, right? Whatever that is. So that's kind of how you can parallelize them. Uh, at the same stage, you can run multiple scripts. Okay. With uh, GitLab, at least, um, I'm not sure about other uh, tooling channels, um, you can uh, determine whether or not something can run before or after uh, a certain set. Now, Adrian has it really nicely, cleanly set up so that one thing hap happens after the other, but you can even say, if this fails, don't run this, or if this fails, I still want you to run this. Got it. Uh, so there's options yep. like that. I yep. don't know if there's a parallel opportunity uh, within the actual runners, but you might be able to run multiple runners that do parallel activities within mm -hmm. GitLab. Yeah, exactly. And there's the runner <laughs> component, which you know I didn't mention because I don't have enough time for that. But yeah, yeah. So basically, <laughs> right, let's configure let, let's configure uh, one more interface, uh, loopback 101, right? So we'll just be as adding uh, or loopback 100, right? We'll just so this is on my first switch. I'm saving this on my second switch. Same thing, and this could be any configuration, right? I'm just showing you here a demo of a lowback interface. Could be N4 SPF. You could have a full configuration of all your infrastructure of your all switch. You could have BGP or SPF, your HRP, or like I said, a full config. So we'll just make it 100.2 on the second one. And I was mentioning that uh, the, those trigger data files for PyTS. So here is where actually how you specify for PyTS on how it should look for. So this is where parallelism comes into the picture. Kareem, quite nice because you, the PyTS has the parallel keyword where you can actually run, connect to multiple devices at the same time, run these commands in parallel on several devices at the same time. So it's basically just showing IP or SPF neighbor detail and make sure that it includes these two neighbors, right? On switch one. And then same thing on switch two, right? So I'm checking YSPF neighborships. And then also I have the option of doing a show IP route and looking for my new routes, right? So I'm looking for those two new loopback addresses. I'm making sure that they've been learned. The loopback on switch two has been learned on switch one and the loopback on switch one, right? Has been loaded on switch two. Basically I know that they've been co correctly configured and they've been learned. So my configuration is successful at that point. So that's my test. So this is the post trigger data file. So now if I simply do a git status, I see that I have these three new files, right? With the new configuration, with the new loopback uh, interface. So I do a git add, a git commit dash M, and I say uh, added loopback 100, and then a git push, and I do, I log in, Uh, this is oh, hold on. Let me didn't get the right password. All right, so that's been pushed. So if I go back to GitLab, right, I go on the pipelines. I see that the pipeline has been automatically triggered. So adding loopback 101 or 100 here. 
and now it's going to the stages, right? So as stage PyTS pre-snapshot is just running the commands, right? It shows you here uh, the Docker image that is running. If it's not there, it's gonna pull it, right? So if you have a new version, there's a new Ansible that came out, you've built, you've updated your image, uh, your Docker image with a new version of PyTS or a new version of Ansible, whatever it is, you can create, of course, a new tag. Uh, so it's, it's fairly verbose, uh, all the commands that PyTS runs. It's super cool that it does all of this automatically for you, right? Uh, so job has been completely uh, successful. And if I go to pipelines, it should be going to the next stage automatically, right? So I see here deploying or SPF. So this is just gonna go and run that Ansible playbook with those host bars that have been updated. So it's connecting to both of the switches. And once this stage completes, <clears throat> we'll be able to see here, let me see if it shows up yet, that Lubeck, oh, there we go, Lubeck 100, right? Cool. Nice. So it's been, <clears throat> It's been configured and basically on both devices. So Adrian is, uh, we're unfortunately running out of time, but as that's running on the last yeah. bit of it, I just wanted to um, comment. You had said earlier, you have all, this whole thing uh, on, a, on a Twitch stream. Um, so everything that you built out, all the individual parts and pieces. Um, so that's awesome. Snackers, go check that out. Um, the other bits, uh, the cool thing that you've done here is you've kind of only almost done only the first part because you've only done C the CML testing. And so I wanted to mention really quickly before we went that we can do all of these things in these uh, virtual environments in CML, test to make sure everything is set up appropriately, and then add, add yet another step to this to uh, deploy to our um live environments, our production environments, and then add yet another step um, to test against those live environments. So um, the concepts themselves can be expanded in either direction. And I, I just think what you've done here, Adrian, is um, fantastic work. It's really made, um, or it's really will make uh, a lot of people's lives a little bit easier, I think, in getting started in, in their programmability practice. So thanks for sharing this with us. Uh, any final comments before we let you go? No, thank you so much for having me. I always love having uh, Stack Minutes with you guys and uh, looking forward to the next one. If you want to get a deeper dive on, on CI, CD pipeline or automation in general, check out uh, Cisco U. Uh, we have some great learning path that does a deep dive um, into CI, CD pipeline and, pipeline and infrastructure automation in general. So uh, head over to u.cisco.com. And Adrian, it's always a pleasure to have you. Snackers, it's been great. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys.